Hi, this is Scott from Hypervac Technologies. Today we're going to be showing you how to do an install on one of our trailers. Okay, so you've probably received all of your trailer package now. You're going to have a whole bunch of pallets with a whole bunch of stuff on there. It might look a little confusing to start with, uh, but it will all make sense once you've watched this video. The first thing you're going to want to do is locate your bag door, this piece right here. Uh, this is the simplest way to do the installation. So this bag door includes both your door and your bag plate, which is here. So this will have your rings on with your bags coming out and everything. So the first thing we want to do is install this on the trailer. Now you're going to want to put it on the driver's side of the trailer. <clears throat> so we need to get it up on the roof and locate it first. So we're going to move this up onto the roof now and then uh, I'll show you how to locate this and we'll go from there. So now we've got the plenum uh, bag plate up here. Um, as you can see, I've laid down some plywood on top of the roof here. Uh, reason for that being the sheeting that I put on top of these trailers is fairly thin. And uh, this trailer is actually an XR model, which is a good, good model trailer. So it's a nice sheeting, but it still is quite thin. So you're gonna to wanna to be aware of that and lay out some plywood or just some two by 10 planks or something. Uh, we've gone a little excessive here just because we're filming this, but you really just need a strip behind the bag door here and one in front over there and maybe one behind the bag plate over here. Um, just so you've got a walking room around to work on and you're not actually standing on the tin. Um, <clears throat> okay, so now that we've got this up here, we're going to need to locate this. So what we're going to do is we want to measure three and a half inches from the edge of the trailer and make a mark. All right, I've already marked it down in here, but you want to mark it so it's not going to be on the roof. Well, it depends if you care or not, but um, I usually like to put it so that the marks aren't visible once I'm all finished working. So you want to put a mark towards the front of the trailer here, and then a couple feet back from the end of the trailer, you want to put another mark at three and a half inches here. So basically you just measure over, mark it three and a half inches, and then you're gonna to wanna to slide your plenum. So you're sitting on those positions and square along the trailer. So as we saw inside the trailer, our roof truss members or frame members are running about 24 inches apart, uh, on, well on center. Um, so we wanna be able to figure out where that is in here. And we want our first hole in our uh, bag plate to be sitting between the second set of uh, frame members. So when you're on the roof here you can usually feel where those frame members are and get a pretty good idea of where they are. Like I know I've got one right here, this is my first frame member back from the from the back and I've got another one here. <clears throat> now I usually mark this out before I have the bag door out and I already have marked this but I usually figure out where it is you know get a pretty good idea and then I'm going to want to measure 12 inches into the center of that and just make a mark. When we open this up you'll see the mark I've made and we'll go ahead and do that now. Okay now we open it up and you can see here I've already made my mark which gives me center of my two frame members there. So we want to move the bag plate so you're sitting pretty much in the center of those uh, in the center of that hole being on your center line there. Uh, this, this way it enables the, uh, the, bags, the, bag, uh, the bag plate to be sitting in the center of all those trusses. These holes are all laid out on 24 inch centers for that reason. Um, it's pretty rare to find a trailer with 16 inch centers. It can be more difficult if that's the case, but if you do, if you're looking for a trailer, make sure you check the, the roof and that the centers are all on 24 inch centers. Okay, so once we got this located and positioned on our roof. So now once we're here, we're gonna to wanna to drill a couple of pilot holes. And what we're gonna do, we're only gonna drill four pilot holes in this one. One, two, three, four on the other end. Now the reason we're gonna do that is because once we get those pilot holes drilled, we'll drop a couple of bolts in and we'll be able to hold up our plenum from the inside. 
and, uh, and mark our plenum and do our cuts out on that. <coughs> and once we actually have these drilled out as well, we're going to mark our uh, holes here so we can cut those out as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do that quickly now in some time lapse and, uh, and then we'll come back and go through the rest of the procedure. <coughs> okay, so you're going to want a 5 16 drill bit for this because this all gets mounted with 5 16 bolts. <coughs> so we want to do the furthest hole away and the closest one to the front of the trailer. And then we're basically doing the four corners of the, of the unit. And I've got some long 5 16 they're about by two inches long bolts that I'll just drop in here. Keep everything positioned. Uh, you are able to take these shocks off if you do find them that they're in the way a little bit. We'll go to the other side. Uh, to get these shocks off, there's just a little pin that sits around here. You just need to clip that off. These ones aren't on here yet, uh, just for ease of my installation. But uh, you just simply just pop them off and they pop straight back on again. Double check my dimension here. My other two bolts. All right, so now we have our location all set and done. So we can go ahead and mark our holes. Now, once I've got these marked and uh, I take the, move the bag plate away from the holes to cut them out, I usually cut just a hair bigger than the hole than the marks that are on there. Okay, so the next step we want to do before we install our plenum is we want to cut the holes in our roof. Uh, it's a lot easier to do it now and let the pieces fall down through rather than picking them out of the plenum once it's installed. <coughs> and it's kind of hard to cut them out when you've got the bag plate up there. So for this, uh, 10 snips work fine. I've got a set of nibblers that I'm going to use uh, just to speed things up, but I just usually drill a half inch hole in there, and then a set of nibblers. And as I said, you're going to want to cut just a little bit bigger than the hole. I'm going to continue along, do that for all of these, and then we'll get the bag plate situated back in its position, and then we'll be ready to mount the plenum. Okay, as you can see as I move along here, I'm not actually walking on my plywood that's there, but what I am doing is I'm standing right on my roof members here. Uh, you don't want to be off these roof members. The sheeting is fairly thin, so just keep that in mind. Uh, wouldn't hurt to, as you come along, move some plywood along and stand on that if you're not comfortable just standing on the ribs themselves. I've done a lot of these, a lot of experience doing it, uh, so I'm quite happy doing this, knowing I'm not going to wreck the trailer or wreck the roof of the trailer. But if you are worried about that, then maybe just put a bit of plywood, shift it along as you go. All right, so now we're, now we're ready to mount our bag plate, and bag door, uh, then the plenum and everything. Uh, but what we want to do is make sure we get everything sealed up tight so we've got no water leaks. I have already pre-drilled all my mounting holes down the sides here. Uh, the reason I do that is because I can get all the debris and blow it off and clean it off before I silicon it down. And also it gives me a nice line of where I need to run my silicon. Now there's a couple of ways I do this. Uh, I like to seal around each hole and then also around the full perimeter of the uh, bag door and then once the bag door is mounted and everything's uh, fastened and good to go I'll also come back and then reseal it right around the outside of the bag plate itself again just for a double assurance not going to have any water leaking in there and uh, so it's pretty simple just these you have about two inches of clearance past these holes here 
you want to be very liberal with the silicon. Again, being careful to uh, step on your ribs as you do this, if you don't have plywood down. Okay, we've got our silicon down now. So we're gonna position our bag door back over. Now obviously, it's a lot easier if you have a friend to help you do this. And uh, one, pick it up from each side, lift it on, try to position it so that you're not sliding it around on the silicon too much. So, We'll be mounting this to the plenum with some 5 16 by 1 inch bolts. Make sure you put your, your washer on there. So what we're going to do now is we're just, we're just again getting our four corners in so that we can get our plenum up and situated and mounted and then we can go through and put the rest, rest of our bolts in. If you put all of the bolts in, um, if you put all, sorry it's a little noisy here, the boys are still working. Um, if you put all the bolts in first to try and mount the plenum, they'll just get in your way as you're trying to push it up. So I suggest just doing your four corners again, get the plenum up there, get the four bolts mounted and then you can go back, come back and then do the rest of the bolts. So we'll go down and do that now. Okay, so as I said before, most of these trailers come with 24 inch centers on your frame members up here. Um, so you're going to want to check that, have a quick look. Yeah, 24 on center. Uh, one thing you're going to be, have to be cognitive of is the, where the frame members are when you're putting the bag plate up here because you're going to want to make sure you check all your mounting holes along the plate and then they're not going to run into a frame member. Uh, I've already done my locate up here and everything is great. If you do see up on the roof where some of your mounting holes are and if they are going to run into a frame member, then just push it one way or the other a little bit so that you make sure you're not in. Um, Sometimes I have found on some of these trailers that around the middle of the bag plate you will come into contact with a frame member. Uh, you can just re-drill a new hole in the bag plate away from the frame member and come down. Uh, you don't have to 100% use all those mounting holes. If you need to drill a new hole off to the side a little bit, go ahead and do that to make your life easier. Okay, so our next step is we're going to bring the plenum in and we're going to get our plenum mounted or situated ready to be marked and, uh, and cut. Um, so what we're going to do to do that, if you're lucky enough on a trailer where you can get a hook in somewhere, that's great. But what, on here we've got full tubing frame members right through with no access points. So we're actually going to drill a couple of holes. I'm going to drill a hole here and here and then back uh, somewhere about here and here. And the reason for that is we're going to actually put a uh, ratchet strap in here just to hang our plenum in there and then we can tighten it up, tight against the roof, locate our uh, holes so everything lines up and then we're going to mark these frame members on the plenum itself, make those cutouts so it sits up there nice and flush against the ceiling here. Okay, so I've got my holes drilled up here um, and I've just got a couple of simple motorcycle straps. I'm just going to... Put in there. And there. Just going to loop that down. And we're going to hang our plenum in these straps. Just makes it easier to hold it up there and do all the work you need to do without having to worry about it. Uh, you're going to want to make sure you've got your clamp, like we have motors, whether it be a motorcycle strap or a ratchet strap, on the inside of your trailer so that you've got easy access to it and you're not fighting with it back here once the plenum's up there. So we just have a nice loop here, then we'll just carry our plenum through and sit it right in here. Okay, so we've got our plenum situated up here now. It's just uh, temporarily put in there because we need to mark out our ribs to make sure we can cut those out and sit it up flat against the roof. As you'll notice, 
this plenum does go in a particular way, so you don't want to get that confused. Uh, this is our dumping spot into our bin that will sit underneath here. So you want to make sure that's towards the front of the trailer. And then your intake is up here at the front, which will come from our Havoc system up into the plenum here. Uh, you do have the option to move this back further, back another two feet if you want. Um, this particular customer is putting a bunch of other stuff in his trailer, so we're trying to keep it as far forward as, as possible to give him as much room in his trailer. Uh, now, once we have this up here, we've got a little nice efficiency. We used a couple of uh, nuts on the bolts we put through just to keep it locked into place and fairly steady. And then we're going to go ahead and mark all our ribs on both sides. Now, the reason we did the measurement on the roof at three and a half inches it allows you to put to give yourself a little bit of space between the plenum and the wall here in order to get your hands up and do what you need to do, bolting it up and that sort of thing, so you're not squeezed for space there. So you end up with about five inches here between the plenum and the uh, wall there. Uh, so then we want to go ahead, mark all of our ribs. Just take a marking pen. You want to mark them fairly close to the rib. because we are going to seal around that um, once this is all installed. So the less gap you have in there, the better for the sealing. Now, as you can see here, I can already tell I've got one position here of my mounting holes, which is running right close to a rib. So when I do my install from up top, I'm gonna to take note of that hole. And I'm gonna just move it back about an inch and a half or so back here. So it doesn't cause me any problems with mounting through that rib there. Okay, now we've got everything marked up here. We do need to know how deep we've got to cut down from these ribs. If you've got one of these little squares, it's perfect. Uh, if you don't, you can just measure down how far it is. I know these are one inch, which is one inch square tubing, so I pretty much know what it is. It does have some tape on the top, uh, so it's probably gonna be about an inch and a sixteenth, but you can set your square, push it through to the ceiling, and then you know how deep you've got to come. Uh, I'm actually sitting at about an inch and a quarter here on this one. And uh, so now I know how deep to make my cuts in order for this to sit up flush. Okay, so I'm just going along marking all the marks that I had, just transferring those marks up and down on the inside. This is where one of these little squares is a great little tool. So now I've got that. And I've already got my height set on this square, but if you don't have one of these squares, you can just use a uh, tape measure, measure down however far you need to go and mark those. Okay, so now we have all of our marks laid out, so we need to cut this out. The easiest way is with a jigsaw. Um, numerous ways you can do it, guys use grinders, whatever. Um, whatever you've got handy, use. Jigsaw is great. Um, there is you can buy aluminum blades for jigsaws, which work like a dream on these things. Um, so we're gonna go ahead now and cut all these out and then we're ready to put the plenum in. All right, I'm gonna start cutting these out. Make sure, when you, if you're using a jigsaw or any sort of tool, cutting these out. Safety first, people. Glasses, gloves, regular safety equipment that's required. I'm just gonna make all my straight cuts first. Then I'll lay it on its side and come back and put my finger cuts inside. Okay, so you saw me cut one out with the jigsaw. You can cut them out of the grinder as well. I'm gonna show you how easy that is as well. So notice how I cut the two sides first. And then what I'm gonna do is just cut deep enough here so then I can just break it off by hand. <laughs> then I can clean that up with a little file and just make it nice and smooth so you're not gonna cut your hands on it. Okay, now we've got our plenum all cut out and ready to install. I do suggest doing a test fit first, making sure that it does line up in case you do need to trim some pieces out of there. Uh, to make sure it all fits up there nice and snug. Um, now in your kit you will also find five of these 10 inch rings. 
Uh, this is what your bags will tie onto. Now, what we do with these, as you can see in the trailer here, we're actually going to sandwich these inside the plenum up through these holes. And what that does, that enables us to get a real good, nice seal around this and sandwich the plenum and the roof structure all together in one. So, very key, important part of the project of, of this procedure is make sure you put these inside your plenum. before you mount it, because once you mount this plenum, there's no way to get these things inside. So make sure you get them inside here before you actually mount your plenum up. Um, that'll save you a hell of a lot of grief than having to remove it, put them in, and put it back up again. Okay, so we've got our bag plate up there situated. Bolts are coming through. Now before we want to put this up, we want to get a bead of silicone on this as well. Uh, just basically to stop all the air from escaping uh, when your vacuum is actually running, you don't want all that dust blowing out into your trailer. So a nice, again, liberal bead on your, uh, the top of your plenum here, so when it sits up, it squishes together, and uh, we're not going to have any air leakage issues. Okay, we've got our plenum all situated up here now. We've got the four corners temporarily, well, just put on there with speed nuts. The nuts we'll supply you with will be um, what they call stover nuts, which is a lock nut. They will not come off. Uh, it's a little easy to put some speed nuts on first just to get everything situated and then uh, so now you're going to want one person on top, one person below. So one person putting the bolts through and holding them while and doing them up while one of the others holds the nut or the bolt whichever way. It is handy to have one of these tools, a line up bar, just to get all the holes lined up as you move along. Uh, it's a lot easier to do from up top, you just sort of poke it through, line everything up because these walls will move a little, they have some flex in them. Um, that's why I pre-drilled all my holes up top, so when I go up there now, I can just line these holes up, drop the bolt through, and we should be good to go. Okay, so we've got our bag plate and plenum underneath all mounted up, everything's secure, uh, everything's bolted down, good to go. Next step is we want to get our rings up in here. <clears throat> now, if you've got a couple of sets of these C-clamps, these are fantastic, uh, very handy for doing this. You don't necessarily need them. You can hold it up by the hand and drill one at a time. It's not a big deal. Uh, if you do have these though, it's very handy. I'm lucky because we're in the shop here and I've got access to all this stuff. But just simply lift your rings up because we placed them in there before we mounted the plenum. Fasten those down, and then we just got to drill out. It's a quarter inch drill bit. We're using uh, quarter inch bolts uh, to hold these on, and uh, it's just a matter of drilling them out, putting the bolts in, and doing them up. Okay, so we've got the hard part of it over now. Plenum's up, bag door's up, everything's good there. That's probably the hardest part of the build. Uh, now it's just sitting, situating all your equipment inside the trailer. We've already mounted the, well we haven't mounted it, but we've already placed the Havoc in here initially. Um, a couple of things to be, aware of, to be aware of with this, with the mounting, is your intake, make sure it's sitting back behind your door. Um, it can be right up against the door if you want. 
just to make a bit of extra room in here. We've got this one mounted probably about a half inch from the actual face of the door, half inch to an inch. Uh, we're just, in this particular trailer, we're trying to maximize as much space as possible in here. So we have pulled it right up. Um, you will notice that there, there is a, usually a seam where the uh, floor trusses are in these. And a lot of times you get lucky and it's actually 48 inches back off here. And it does work in a really good position to actually have your mounting hole, which is here on the Havoc, to run straight through your, your frame member here. We have doubled up the plywood in this floor, so we're not too worried about going through a frame member. Um, we're gonna use fender washers and everything on the underneath of this. So we, we're happy with just pulling it forward and letting it sit where it is right now. Um, off the side of the wall, you're gonna want some clearance on the side of the wall here. Around about three and a half to four inches is what you want. So this one we're sitting about three and three quarter inches off the, off the wall there. Uh, that's great. Our hose will be able to come up, run into here. We did pull the plenum forward on this, this build uh, to maximize room again. Uh, so we probably will install a 90 degree elbow on this before our hose comes up. Uh, if you do push the plenum back, you're able to just hook your hose straight from this onto here. Um, it does make it a nice cleaner look if you do put a 90 degree elbow on there. Just a sheet metal 90 degree is fine. That's all you need to put in there. Uh, as you'll see what we do with that uh, later on in the build. <clears throat> so we've got this here. So now uh, we would have two mounting holes back in the, uh, in the frame here. Now this frame is removable to make it easier. So I will dismount this frame. Uh, the fan is on a plug so you can just unplug the fan and then take out the bolts, remove the frame and uh, drill all your mounting holes, mount your Havoc, put the frame back on. Uh, quite quick and simple and easy. Uh, once again, it's a two-man job. You need a guy underneath the trailer, a guy on top. Uh, there's pretty limited room underneath these trailers, but uh, get a little guy like me to squeeze under there and you should be good. <clears throat> uh, any, I think that's about it as far as mounting the trailer. Now, when you are uh, deciding on where all your equipment's gonna go, you have to keep a few things in mind. Uh, we will be drilling a hole through the wall here. Uh, in order to run the muffler out the wall. And we'll go over the compressor stuff when we get to that later. But uh, let's go ahead now and we'll get this thing all mounted up. Okay, so we've got all our holes pre-drilled now. Uh, it's just a matter of dropping in. We do supply with half inch bolts. We use half inch bolts to mount this. Uh, depending on your subfloor, how thick it is and whether you're going through a frame member or not, you may need to pick up some longer bolts, some longer half inch if you need that extra distance. Uh, we do supply with a standard that we hope will fit, uh, but not, not all trailers are built the same, so you may be required to go pick up a couple of bolts. But And I do have some big half-inch, uh, well, these are actually 5.8 fender washers, but get some nice beefy size fender washers to put underneath. I always double them up with the fender washers and then I'll use my half inch washer on top like that just for extra grip. But the, uh, the 5 8 ones usually come a little bit thicker, uh, just a, a standard, these are not really fender washers, they're a standard 5 8 but they have more meat to them than a typical fender washer, they're usually a little thicker. <clears throat> so make sure you put those on underneath the trailer uh, just for that extra support in there should you get into an accident or something like that. Uh, but once you have this assembled like this, you shouldn't really have any more any problems with this being able to rip out of the floor. It's a low center of gravity on these, and uh, so it takes a lot for them actually to, to come out. Okay, so once we've got our Havoc in position where we want it, one thing before we mount it down is uh, we want to locate our exhaust where it's gonna go through the wall and a uh, fairly simple thing. The reason we want to do this before we mount it down is we may have to move it out of the way a little bit in order to uh, drill our pilot hole through the wall. And uh, it's fairly simple enough on your exhaust. You're going to have the outlet here like this. And I find it easiest just to use a square. And then mark. Both sides, and it's an inch and a half out 
uh, it's an inch and three quarter pipe, so we'll go half of that, seven eighths to center. And then we just want up at top. Mark our bottom. And then seven eighths. Center. Right there. So we know where our hole's got to be to go through. And in your package, you should have received one of these. It's a, just a simple dryer hood. Uh, works great for this application. And so basically, we've got a five inch dryer hood here. So we're going to drill a five inch hole saw, use a five inch hole saw to drill a hole through the trailer itself. And then we'll mount this in that way. And that way, we can put our exhaust through and blow out. And we've got a nice little rain cover for it. So uh, we're going to go ahead now and get that all drilled in and done and then uh, we'll be right back with you. So seeing as I've already got this mounted, I'm just going to remove the muffler to get my pilot hole drilled through there. Uh, it is easier if you, you know, you pre-drill your holes and before you mount it, uh, just slide the Havoc out of the way and then drill your pilot hole through there. Um, but because I've already got it mounted, I'm just taking the muffler off quickly. and I can easily get my pilot hole through here. Now I've got my pilot hole in, I can come in from the outside and drill my five inch hole through. Uh, I could do it through here as well, I just like drilling through from the outside to give a cleaner look through there. Okay, so now our hole is cut. We've installed our muffler pipe onto the uh, engine there. I usually put these on and just give them a little kick to the side a little, just so it shoots sort of back this way away from the wheel well. And uh, now we've got that in there, we're ready to install our uh, dry vent here. You may have to round this hole out a little bit more once you've uh, cut your five inch hole. These are a tapered fitting, uh, so they will feel like they're gonna go in up to about this point, but then they'll, on just a five inch hole, it'll get tight. So a couple of options, you can either cut this back and then slit it to squeeze it tighter, or just open up your holes a little more so this fits in. Um, and obviously, we're going to want to run a bead of silicon around this so it doesn't leak. So again, a nice liberal bead. in and voila a um, couple of ways you can mount this uh, I'm going to use some rivets because I have a rivet gun here uh, easy for me if you don't have, have access to a rivet gun or anything you can just put some tap screws in here the silicon will hold it good and good and well and keep it sealed um, and then a couple of little tap screws in four corners should be good Now I also like to run another little bit of silicon just over the top to stop any water from just getting in behind there. And just like that. Okay, so now our Havoc's all in there and good to go. Uh, we're ready to mount our compressor. You will find when you get your compressor that you will find uh, four rubber blocks in there. Now these rubber blocks will go under your mounting feet down here. Um, we've already got it set up on a forklift. It's, uh, it's almost, it's very hard to do without a forklift. So let's just say that it is possible, but it is hard. Um, the, the compressor itself will be mounted close to the front man door here. And uh, we'll go through the reasons on that once we get it inside. So we're, and the quickest way to get this in usually we find is 
just straight through the mend door, set it down and then you can manhandle it into position uh, and then just lift it up to get the rubber feet underneath. So we're going to go ahead and get this inside the trailer now and then uh, once we get it in the trailer we'll go ahead and tell you about uh, all the positioning and everything for it. Okay so now we've got our compressor in here and in position. Uh, you will find in the manual with your compressor, there'll be a little baggie with a little cup in it. Now this is your exhaust deflector, it bolts on right here. Um, you can position it in different positions, but you're going to need to position it so it blows this way and out the door. Um, so you're going to want the compressor far enough forward that it's just forward enough so the exhaust is blowing out your man door here. <coughs> and the other point as well is you do need uh, some air gap behind the wall here. You can't have your compressor right tight up against the wall because the pulley on the compressor is actually a fan as well, which actually blows cold air against the pump here. So you're going to need, uh, the compressor company likes at least eight inches gap in here. So from the, from the fan blade itself, we've got eight inches right there now, uh, which ends up being about six inches from the guard. So that gives us some good clearance in there to get some air moving through the compressor itself. And when you mount this, it's good if you can try and find one of your frame members on the floor of the uh, trailer. So hop underneath, measure out where they are. I know I've got one right here and I'm sitting about 24 inches back to here. So I may have to move my, my uh, compressor forward a bit in order to hit one of those. Uh, the other option is, is to running some big fish plates underneath uh, the trailer itself, whether it be some angle iron or some flat iron uh, to support on there, just to give it a little more. These compressors are fairly top heavy, uh, so you want some good stable support underneath the compressor or underneath the trailer, uh, so that if something does happen, you get into an accident or something, it can't actually pull the bolts through the floor. So if you have some big heavy uh, angle iron, it doesn't have to be heavy, but just something, uh, a decent fish plate underneath the trailer, to take the weight of the compressor should anything happen in an accident. Uh, if you can catch one of your frame members, then that's even better. But you're going to want that on uh, both legs of the trailer. And you're going to want to run your fish plates across this way on the legs, not across this way. Uh, reason for that being is you need the vibration there. If you lock it this way, the compressor has less chance of vibrating. Um, it, we do have the rubber pads which will go underneath as well, but if you do run in fish plates, you're going to want to run them the same direction as the legs on the trailer. So we're going to, this, this trailer exact actually isn't going to be mounted here. Uh, we're moving it back for the customer's preference and we're actually going to exhaust down through the floor. Uh, that is an option that you can run. Uh, if you do that, you'll need to take it to a muffler shop. Um, and I suggest, I've seen some guys actually muff, you know, uh, have a pipe come right off this and down through the floor but my recommendation recommendation is actually removing this muffler and uh, coming straight off the engine port with your pipe down through the floor and running another um, another muffler underneath the trailer which uh, a muffler shop or an exhaust shop can do anything you need to do to get that sorted out uh, but I highly recommend taking it to, any, to a muffler shop to do it rather than doing it yourself uh, those guys are the professionals, they know how it all needs to be set up. Because you will need to run a flex line in that to handle the vibration. You can't just hard pipe this straight through the floor. And uh, <clears throat> I'll share an example of that once we've actually got mounted this one where it needs to go and we actually have the muffler down through there. Okay, we're going to go ahead and move this now back to its original position, get it mounted, and then I'll, once we have it all mounted, I'll go ahead and show you everything that, that we've done for that. Okay, so this is the 13 horse uh, cast air compressor that we put in the trailers. Uh, now these are fairly simple and easy to use. They're 100% turn them on and let them do everything. Everything's automatic, you don't have to touch anything. Um, so to turn it on, it's just simple, key switch to on, and then pull start there. Now you can wire these in with a battery. In this model, we in this trailer we have wired this in with a battery. Uh, it's just simply connecting a positive wire to the uh, starter solenoid on the back of the compressor here 
and then your negative terminal to the block of the engine somewhere. Uh, this one's mounted to one of the mounting bolts underneath, but anywhere on the block that's going to ground will be fine. <coughs> uh, and that being said, should your battery die or anything, you can still pull start it. You just have to have it on the on condition. Now turning this off is just simply turn the ignition to off and it will shut down. Uh, you will see a throttle lever here. Do not, under any circumstances, touch this or move this. Everything is already set from the factory of how it's supposed to be. So it's literally just turn it on, start it, let it run. It'll idle up and down as it needs to. Everything's automatic. Uh, we have a lot of guys that do tend to try and play with this and it screws everything up. So do not touch the throttle lever. Um, down here you will see your choke and your fuel. So there's a fuel lever, fuel on, fuel off. When you're transporting the trailer around, you're gonna to wanna to have your fuel off, uh, just so you don't get any fuel, because it's gravity fed, feeding down with vibration into the float bowl of the carb, which can cause some vapor lock. So get in the habit of just turning that fuel to the off position when you shut down, and then back into the on position when you're ready to run. <clears throat> once you do have it started, and you, you've, you'll choke it out to start, and then once it's, once it's running, turn the choke off, and be up and running good to go. Um, this one we have installed and it's optional if uh, you want to as well, is we put a, a drain down here from the compressor. It just makes it a lot easier to drain. We ran a hose down through the floor um, just with a little ball valve here. So it's just at the end of the job, you can easily just turn that lever, drains the tank, gets any moisture out of the tank that's, uh, that could be in there. A uh, good habit to get into is draining your tank after every job. Uh, another reason you don't really want to be driving around with a fully compressed tank uh, in case of an accident or something like that. But a uh, good habit to be into. <clears throat> and that's about it for the compressor. Okay, so now we have all our main components installed, our compressor, our vacuum. It's really just final touches now, uh, cleaning everything else up. So uh, next we want to mount our gas tanks. Keep them chill and keep them fairly close to your uh, vacuum here. Uh, there's a few options. We mount them just like this, uh, but some guys will actually build a little box that they can stack them on top, that sort of thing. That's completely up to the customer, what they want to do there. Uh, so we just got a couple of D hooks down on the floor and we run a strap around to hold them into place. And the reason we use marine tanks for this is uh, they're easy to remove, take out at the gas station, fill them up, slide them back in. And you get two tanks so that uh, you've got lots of fuel to run for a day, a couple of days. And, uh, and then once we get those installed, um, it's our drum. So we'll come over here. So in your package, you'll get one of these drum brackets. Uh, it's just three bolts, bolt through the floor. This one we've positioned away from the plenum, uh, mainly because the client is putting a, a, some equipment right here. So we wanted more room here. So we just pushed it over to the side and uh, bolted down and our drum goes in there. So once you've got your drum in, then it's just a matter of putting your hoses on. So these are just held on with some gear clamps. Just slide the hose on, gear clamp up, same on the top of the ring. Uh, to empty your drum, it's literally just lift this little thing up here, pop this out, and then the lid comes straight off. So leave the lid and everything attached to your hose. It's just easier that way. Take your drum out, empty it. A lot of guys will just throw garbage bags in there. You can do that because it still seals up great with a garbage bag. Put a garbage bag in and then you just have to pull the garbage bag out and away you go. Clamp it back down and we're good to go. Uh, if you do get a portable with your package, most guys do. Uh, various places you can mount these depending on your situation and the way you want your trailer set up. But again, just a couple of D hooks on the wall with a strap, it holds it in nice and good. Uh, there's a few options with your hoses. A lot of guys will like to Put a couple of ladder hooks up here and hang drape their hoses over the ladder hooks coming down here uh, we haven't done that on this trailer because the customer is actually going to lay them on the floor uh, but that's one good option and every person is going to be particular with the way they want their trailer set up but that this is just the way we're doing on this one and then uh, our other hose on the front of the vacuum is you want to hook up as well same thing again just some gear clamps holding over here straight up there and uh, there are options here too, like some guys will put a 90 degree sheet metal elbow up here and run down, that's fine to do, uh, all customer preference. 
as you can see in this trailer too, when we install, when we do the installs on the trailers, we like to put a lot of LED lights in just to keep it nice and bright in here. They're quick and easy to wire in. Uh, if you do want to do it yourself, you can go to Amazon. Uh, you'll find them on Amazon or even your local uh, store somewhere that will have LED lights. Just string them up. They're 12 volts, so they wire into a battery easily. You can wire them into the battery on the compressor if you're mounting one there, or straight into the battery on the, uh, the vacuum here. Uh, real simple and easy. And uh, we've just installed their own little switch here. Like I said, it's just two wires, positive and negative. You can run an inline fuse if you want. Uh, usually you don't need to with LEDs though. Um, but uh, that's quite simple and another nice little upgrade you can do for, for that. <clears throat> and that's really about it for the, the trailer install. Okay, so we're gonna do a quick maintenance video on the trailers themselves and what you need to, you know, maintain, look after, um, keep an eye on, that sort of thing. We are dealing with uh, mechanical motors, so the, the more you maintain them, keep them maintained, they'll do very good and last you a long time. If you don't maintain them, they'll give you nothing but grief. Uh, so for the compressor here, very simple. So you want to change your oil on your Honda engine here once every 100 hours. Uh, we recommend synthetic 5W30 for that. There is an oil drain hose on the back of the uh, compressor here. So it's led you to just take that nut, that nut off there, drain your oil out, and then fill it back up. And your fill port on the compressor. So your fill port on your compressor is down here. This is where you check your engine oil as well. So like I said, every 100 hours you want to change the oil on that. Now on your compressor head, this you're going to want to change the oil. I recommend doing it twice a year, every six months. Um, typically start of spring and start of fall. Uh, that way it's before both your busy seasons. And you're going to want compressor head oil synthetic compressor head oil only in this and uh, that you can pick up roll air those sort of places auto auto parts stores but it has to be compressor head oil for this for this one um, this is your fill port right here for your compressor head oil and this is your site plug down here to see you know if you're getting low on oil or anything like that it should be sitting about halfway through the circle there and when you fill it that's where you want it to be is halfway through the circle and that's about it for maintenance on the compressor. Uh, if your belts do get loose, um, you can tighten them. It's just literally uh, a matter of spinning these little knobs here, slide the cage off, then you can get in and uh, loosen off the bolts on the head, pull the head back, tighten them back up again. Um, that's how you replace the belts and everything as well if you need to. Now, next maintenance is going to be on your vacuum itself. Um, so again, we make, try to make things fairly simple. Down here, we have an oil drain hose and you're gonna to wanna to change your oil on your vacuum every 100 hours as well. <clears throat> so there is a tack here, a tack and an hour meter, which gives, tells you how many hours it's been running. So every 100 hours, again, five synthetic 5W30 for this, it's the same as this. Um, it's probably good practice and habit to get into is if you're doing an oil change on this, do an oil change on your compressor as well. Do them both at the same time, then you're done. And, uh, and then you know you're good to go. But keep that maintained at every 100 hours and you should have very little problems with these. Um, your dipstick over here for checking your oil. And then your fill port's right here. It takes about 2.8 liters. I'm not sure what that is in gallons for you US guys, but uh, 2.8 liters for this one. I'm not sure exactly how much goes into the compressor. Uh, a lot less, I know that. It's probably about a liter, liter and a half. And, uh, and that's about, and then that's your maintenance for the engine itself. Now your other maintenance is going to be on your drive system down here. So, your bearings, you have two bearings here. Now, you're gonna to wanna to put synthetic grease in these. A good synthetic um, grease is you know, usually good. We usually supply you guys with an extra tube of uh, what we use, it's called a super lube. And uh, it is 
unbelievable stuff. If you can get your hands on Super Lube, use it because it's really, really good. Now, inside, beneath this uh, coupler guard here is where your actual uh, fluid coupler is. Now, there's a jaw coupling inside there, and inside that jaw coupler, you got some rubbers. So it's basically a jaw that comes together like this and spins. And between those teeth are some little rubbers in there and they will wear out. They should last you about a year, but um, you're gonna to wanna to check that periodically. I tell guys when you're doing your oil change, just check your rubbers as well. And that's simply enough, just reach your hand in and give it a little push. And you'll feel a little bit of play in that. There's not much play, like it's, you know, right now this thing, this unit's brand new and there's not even a 16th worth of play in that. Um, when you find that that play is getting, is increasingly bigger up to the point for about three-eighths of an inch play then you know your rubbers are fairly worn out and you're going to need to replace those uh, there will be a we will be posting a video on how to replace those so just check the video out on that when you need when the time comes to do that and so that's your maintenance on oh and with your fluid coupler you will need to replace the oil in that once a year and uh, when the time comes for that, there's, uh, we'll also have another video on replacing the fluid in that. It's very simple and easy to do. Uh, and that's a hydraulic 32 oil that we put in the fluid coupler. Um, other than that, that's your engine maintenance really. Then it's just more of your uh, equipment maintenance, which is going to be your plenum and your bags. So you're gonna to wanna to get up periodically and shake out your bags, clean them out, get them down. Every once in a while, you might want to take them off and throw them through the uh, uh, laundromat as well, and just give them a wash out, put them back on. And also check, you know, once in a while, take a bag off and have a look inside your plenum and see if you have a buildup of dust or anything in there. And if you do, you know, just take a small broom or something and then sweep it to the back. Uh, generally, it's not too bad. Look, most of the debris is shot to the back and drops down. But if you do find that you're getting a bit of a build up, just push it down into the drum back there. Okay, so you're also gonna to wanna to inspect your fan blade at least monthly. Uh, if you get in the habit of just when you're doing all your maintenance, you know, make that part of your maintenance check as well. It's just having a look in here. Uh, there's not really much need to remove the guard, but simply just sort of look in, have a visual inspection and see, you know, have a look at the welds and make sure they'll look good. Uh, these fan blades are fairly indestructible. They're made of 316 steel. They're harmonically balanced. Um, you have to worry too much about them, but if something should get in there and, and bash it around, put it out of balance, it's gonna be, cause you catastrophic failure. So you just wanna keep an eye on that. Make sure everything's good. Just a, it's just a quick visual check. Check the welds, make sure you don't see any cracks. There's no, you know, if the blades aren't, make sure the blades aren't bent, that sort of thing. A uh, good habit to get into for that. And that's about all of the maintenance you need to do on these trailers. Um, <clears throat> one thing to keep in mind is keeping everything free and clear of the vacuum itself here too. You want some airflow. These are air -cool cooled engines. So you do want some airflow moving through here. Get a good habit of leaving your man door open and letting the breeze blow through either way, whichever. And, um, but don't be stacking shelves and all things all over top of this and blocking the heat in because uh, it will start to give you troubles if that happens. So keep the area nice and clean around the vacuum here so it allows air to move through. Uh, key, key important part that you're going to want to do with this. And yeah, that's about it for the maintenance on the trailer. Okay, so if you have any more questions about uh, the H1 trailer system, please feel free to give us a call on the number below. We'll be happy to answer any questions or concerns you have. Thanks a lot for watching.